A very good morning. I welcome you all on this platform of divided classes. And today, uh, I have planned to introduce you the basic concept of evolution by bio evolutionary biology, but uh, not the traditional concepts. My focus will be on the evolutionary concept of conserved sequence that is on your screen. Now, if we see why it is important and why I have uh, chosen uh, this to discuss uh, with you, because if you go with the basic principle of evolution, that suggests that you have organisms and obviously, I must tell you that if you follow the Darwinism concept of evolution, then you must know that these all theories are applicable at the level of population, not at the level of individual. That is something that you should keep in your background of your mind. Okay. So, say you have this person 1, you have this person 2, you have this person 3. They are of the same species obviously because we are talking about, we are dealing, I am dealing with the population. Now, genome 1 of person, genome 2 of person and genome 3 of the person because they are of the same species. So, we can say that more or less they will be, you know, similar to each other, not identical. I am using the word similar given that they are of the same species. Funda is when we say that there is an evolutionary force and that force, if you know, the first thing that you need to evolve is the variation, isn't it? So, say this is the evolutionary force and this context is, in this context, I am proposing a term mutation. If you have a good understanding of evolutionary biology, then you must, must be knowing that evolution uh, actually can be explained by introducing variation and then shaping the variation. These are the two major forces. First, you have to introduce the variation in the population. And that introduction of variation can be done either by mutation. This is the major source of variation in the population. This is the major source that organism of one species is different from the organism of the same species. In this context, some properties of one is different from second and so from the third. So, this variation is actually introduced mainly by mutation, mainly, but also there is another force for the same purpose and that is recombination. Recombination and we can say it as a crossing over, but then recombination is limited only for sexually reproducing organism. Because it is the fundamental process that can take place in meiosis part only, that is during the gamete formation. But yes, then if you are dealing with the mutation, then these, this is the prime force that actually introduce the variation. Mark my word. Mutation introduces the variation. Recombination introduces the variation. And once variation get its entry, among a population depending upon the viability or the advantage in the uh, state uh, in the at the level of organism say particular mutation was advantageous for first then there is a force called as natural selection and uh, natural selection is again universal force with it, you have genetic drift, but then this is applicable only for small population. These are the basics, so I am not dealing much about it. Genetic drift can only be applied for a, a small population, whereas natural selection can apply for large population, even for the smaller population. But then this is particularly for the smaller, uh, smaller population. Okay, now what is the difference between both of them? I am not dealing at this moment. What I am suggesting is that you have mutation that introduce a particular variation. Then these two forces, natural selection and genetic drift, they are responsible for, you know, shaping, 
shaping the gene pool, shaping the population. What I am trying to say is that then they will decide whether one that is having a particular mutation was that mutation advantageous, was that mutation good enough to increase the survival or to increase the fitness. If yes, then one individual one will be supported by natural selection and genetic drift and they will be you know allowed to reproduce and to produce more of a spring as compared to second and three and if so if we follow this principle then with time the mutation that was introduced in organism one will get established in the gene pool the very basic one force introduces particular variation that variation if useful then acted by natural selection and genetic drift they allow that variation to persist to exist in nature by supporting that particular individual to generate and reproduce more and more offspring with the time because it is leaving its more offspring with the time individuals with that particular advantageous mutation will sustain in population and we say that a particular mutation or a particular variation has been established in that particular gene pool this is the basic concept okay now let's plot it in in the context of uh, uh, gene see when you are saying it at the level of gene you must know that what we say today that we have so many genes we have different form of a particular gene what we call as the alleles okay so this alleles have generated from these mutations only followed by establishment their establishment by natural selection and genetic drift and etc so what i am saying that if uh, throughout the evolution this was the case and i assume this to be a gene this blue color is a gene and say after 100 million year ago that is just a random timeline of an evolution there must be some alteration in it isn't it and yes there are alteration we see that if this is today if this is today then what we generally see that this gene in human population this gene have different forms say be it z star be it g minus be it g plus be it g zero be it z x now 150 million year ago this was a single gene isn't it but then due to different evolutionary forces as discussed previously something called mutation result it result into alteration result in alteration in the sequence of that particular gene it introduces some alteration it introduces some variation in its sequence okay obviously at the level of nucleotide bases or base pair this mutation is introducing the alteration in the base pair of this gene then depending upon see depending upon its advantages they were then selected and then they were allowed to exist in the population and today what we see that these were the different forms and different alteration of gene g that were supported throughout the evolution by the natural selection and by so called our genetic drift if the population was small okay so this is the basic concept of evolution although i have taken that very in short form that how it actually works how these two forces one for introducing variation and other for shaping whether that variation is useful or not on on this basis it saves that it will exist in population
now once we know uh, the basic principle that works to say particular variation in a gene among the individuals of a population now uh, let's first see uh, is there any such example in our population say there are many example okay i am taking the very basic one i am taking the example of uh, i genes okay now this i gene is responsible for deciding the type of antigen on the surface of rbc be it one of its form is ia one of its form is ib and one of its form is io there is a complete different biology that how the sugar moieties that a antigens is basically a particular glycolipid add or glycosphingolipid there are two nature of these antigens they are particularly glycosphingolipid sometimes they are glycolipid not talking about mainly about not going that detail but why i'm trying to what i'm trying to say that if you see then with in evolutionary course of time mutation have introduced several alteration in i gene but then three of its form a b and o has been selected by natural selection throughout the evolutionary time period and we generally see that there is three main forms of i gene if you ask me then rest assured it's not that the i allele present in me will be 100% similar or identical to the ia of an individual say uh, pq say q sorry q that will also different what i am saying that ia allele of p will be very much different from the ia allele of q and ia allele of r s and so on okay but yes but uh, then uh, the main part deciding the product will be same in more uh, in one and other individual okay let's do not complicate it further and now if you know this basic that a particular gene goes un under alteration and then saved by mutation and uh, saved by natural selection and drift and drift particularly for the small population i am repeating again and again now i am coming to my question okay my question is see this was again a very tricky question when it was first asked by someone and i have recently got the answer so i am discussing it on this platform what the person asked me he said if you are saying that this is the general principle then tell me one thing when you are dealing with some conjugate sequences what i am saying is like you have this gene 1 okay and this gene 1 is present in say arthropoda again i am using arthropoda because the example that i will discuss will be similar to this part and this there is a homologous gene gene 2 again gene 1 sorry and it is in mice mouse sir they both have similar sequences again although i am word using word similar and that similarity is sir 99.9% isn't it and we generally call them as a conserved genes what is the biology behind this sir you generally say that gene gene undergo alteration then saved by natural selection and uh, Uh, other forces then what about these genes that you call as a conserved genes remember these points we have histone protein you know s3 highly conserved then myoglobin this is also conserved in vertebrates you cannot say that the myoglobin of human is very much different from the other vertebrate but then they have evolved they have diverted very time a very million year ago so now what is the biology what is the principle behind this that something that has been the two group that has been diverted so uh, early in the life even then they are sharing sequence of a particular genes why so and this is 
the problem that I am dealing with. That what is the biology of these sequences? Why there? Why we don't have uh, you know very much different forms of conjugate sequences? This is again the other format of this question. That in population you get to know that for a particular gene, if you uh, deal with the population then among the population there is the there are various form of a particular gene which you generally call as an allele okay see i'm talking the word again population i'm not using the word an individual because in individual you can maximally have two different form of a gene it's a population study okay okay i'm not going that concept of class 12th i will deal it in other time that why i'm saying population and individual okay coming back to my point so what is the reason see it can be best explained by the fact that during course of evolution say when this is a particular first multicellular say not multicellular take it first as a unicellular but metazoa when first metazoa, unicellular metazoa was established, then see, there was something that was important to develop and that was important, that important thing was viable genes. Not ornamental things, not genes like hair color, no, no, no. Genes like enzymes of the glycolysis. Now, these viable genes were established during the course of evolution very early it was even established by the first unicellular metazoa now this is human this is human you don't expect that these sequences of these viable genes in this unicellular metazoa and human to be very much different no you can't Reason being, sir, these viable genes, the establishment of these viable genes, the evolution of this viable gene has already been taken, has already been done by unicellular metazoa. And it was so viable that even a little bit of alteration due to mutation, I am not, you know, I am not declining this fact that there would have been alteration also. But then they mainly main many of this alteration even most of this alteration was deleterious means a little bit of alteration in this viral genes will result into the you know uh, decrease fitness of the individual when you say mutation you generally think that it will increase the fitness but is it will it can increase it can decrease but the fact is for the conserved sequences, for the conserved genes, throughout the evolution, even a slight alteration had resulted into deleting, into deleterious effect. That has resulted into reduced fitness of the organism. And so, natural selection and genetic drift have not supported these alterations. Okay. Why? Because it assume think it just like you have a team. Okay, you are playing cricket and then you have a team of uh, 15 players. I know in cricket we have 11 players but 4 extra. And they all are top players. And if you are uh, asked to do some alteration. Then maximum, maxim, for maximum time you will reject it. No, I am not going to alter anything. Why? Because I have invested so much energy, so much time to get this best team. And I cannot risk by doing any alteration in this best team. This is the case of viable gene. In the very early stage, all these viable genes has already been evolved, has already been established and the product that they are forming are so pure and so polished that bit of alteration and thing will stop and they are actually why they are actually a uh, thing that will cause the viability that will question the viability so every time there is a mutation every time there is an alteration 
organism having that alteration will suffer will die and so that alteration will not be so the basic funda that works is in the case of conserved genes see the, these conserved genes are mainly related directly or indirectly to the viability of the an organism so they have been already they have already been established in very early stage and throughout the evolution if there would have been any mutation any alteration that the established sequence was so pure that that alteration was mostly deleterious okay so that has that is the reason why we don't see different or so many forms so many alleles of a conserved genes because or or, or the these viable genes they are very restricted they actually or uh, evolutionary we can not say that we can introduce many alteration to these viable genes and so why that is why we have uh, very less form of these viable conserved genes okay okay now let's see how it has been experimentally proved now when you say na uh, when you actually want to prove about this conserved property of a gene you just use the property of interchangeability what is i am trying to say see again now take taking this example you have this arthropoda okay i am doing arthropoda and you have this mice that is mammal okay remember the model was for arthropoda they were flies drosophila and for mammal obviously mice my flies have a protein that is known a uh, gene sorry that is known as ilas gene okay say it is homozygous dominant homozygous and it has mice have genes called pax6 okay these genes ilas genes are important for the development of eye in the fly and the same as pax6 in i for the development of mice i of the mice now the thing is these two are very conserved sequences or the conserved genes why so because again the i color can be ornamental thing but development of i cascade is not ornamental it is related to the viability of an organism so from arthropoda itself now arthropoda if you go through the uh, animal kingdom and arthropoda was something many thing have evolved many thing came into picture and that too with a very you know profound effect so was the development of i although there are evidences of i before arthropoda also but then arthropoda in arthropoda you can say that yes i is something that is pick compound i we say compound i in the flies and everything okay so this ilas protein and this pax6 has very conserved sequences they are very conserved in nature and when i'm saying conserved means the sequences say sequences or say product the product of ilas and the product of pax6 are very much similar and we have to prove it this is the uh, this is the actual meaning of being conserved remember one thing if you are saying conserved do not get confused with only with the sequences i am telling again and again there might be alteration in sequences but the main thing is the final product that you are forming should be very much similar and almost identical okay because you know that genes do have some known coding sequence so if there is alteration in known coding sequence fine good enough nothing is going to tease you okay so don't go hard and fast rule with the conserved means similar sequences identical sequences no keep in background main thing that we need to call them conserved is the product the product of pax6 the product means the protein formed by pax6 and the protein formed by ilas have more or less same effect that is why we are calling them conserved then how to prove it see do one thing make a construct these are the two alleles no ilas ilas pax6 pax6 take one from here 
I am denoting it with I less and one allele from pack six of pack six. Sorry, one minute. And then introduce this construct in flies and subsequently in mouse. Okay. So if you do so, that you have mice of having. Okay, you have this mice. And then this construct was also introduced in flies. Remember one thing. Originally, flies do have two copies of ILS. And mice do have two copies of PAC6. But then we are artificially introducing ILS PAC6 combination in mice and flies. The thing that was interesting that the mice also have normal eye. So do have flies. What does it mean? It simply mean it simply mean that this pack six, the product formed by pack six and the product formed by ILS. The product of pack six is well functional in flies, and the product of ILS is also well functional is functional in mice. That is these two genes have property of interchanging their function in different host in different species see they are not different species rather they are diff belonging to different phyla itself getting my point one is from arthropoda other is from mammal yet the protein of this arthropoda fly is working in the uh, for the proper functioning in the you know mammal see how conserved they are how much this product of ILS protein and pack 6 is conserved if you go in detail then this ILS is actually forming a protein this is a protein called I absent A this is the name of protein I absent and this pack 6 is uh, forming a protein called S6, SIX. Okay, so this 6 that is originally the product being formed by PAC6 in mice work efficiently in flies also. And this I absent protein that is originally product of ILS in flies is working efficiently in mice also. Isn't it interesting? Phylum has changed. But yet, these products are working good enough in both these model organisms. And this is what I am repeating, this is what I am saying that it is not that uh, conserved sequences do not undergo mutation, they do not undergo changes, they do not undergo variation, they do not undergo uh, natural selection process. No, they do undergo process of mutation process of natural selection but the end result it is that my conserved sequences so called conserved sequences have already been polished so much by my ancestor that any kind of alteration will eventually leads to the deleterious effect only and then when acted by natural selection they mainly leads to eradication or to uh, you know uh, uh, exclusion of that alteration from the population and that is why the sequence or the final product that was designed my ancestor by my ancestor in this context that was designed in the arthropod itself undergo a little bit modification that also in non uh, non coding sequences but the main crux the main product remain same throughout the evolution i hope the things have bit unfolded for you and I thank you for your patience and thank you for your listening. Thank you for your patience. Thank you. Thank you very much.